I know I'm not the only person who has a reoccurring nightmare where I'm falling to death. It feels so real. It's so apparent to me in that moment as the cold air is biting my flesh and my stomach feels like it's falling out of my feet that there is not a single thing that I can do to stop what has already been set in motion. It's such a helpless feeling. I almost always wake up right at the moment of impact, drenched in cold sweat with my little heart just pottering away. So, we are going to discuss what it might actually feel like if this were to happen for real. I'm going to explain all of the unfortunate things that can happen to the body when falling from a great height and meeting impact, otherwise known as deceleration. When I make these videos, I use autopsy reports, medical case studies, survivor stories, and witness testimony to bring the full picture together. I have also studied human anatomy, pharmacology, and the human nervous system. This video is certainly not for everyone, so viewer discretion advised. In the United States alone, people die from falls at a far more frequent rate than you might realize. There are an average of 30,000 deaths from falls each year. However, many of them are falls within the home. Today we are going to focus on falls specifically from a great height. Despite what you may have heard, because I swear I've heard it too, it is very uncommon for people to die while they are falling. There's an old wives' tale that if you fall from a big enough height, you will suffer cardiac arrest before you ever hit the ground. It would be kind of comforting if this were true, but the truth is often inconvenient. Though it's not impossible to suffer a cardiac event while falling due to fear, it would likely take a lot of extenuating circumstances. Even if you did have a heart attack, they typically do not kill instantaneously. Chances are high that you would hit the ground before it took you out. The very first thing that you would experience besides regret would be a stomach drop sensation. Experts have spent a lot of time analyzing why we feel falling in our stomach and guts first, and they still really aren't sure. Many seem to agree that it has something to do with the sensation of being weightless. Once we step or trip off of stable ground and begin the descent into certain death, we no longer have an oppositional force offering resistance. Kind of like the floor that your feet are on now. Without that, we can't experience our own weight, which gives the illusion of being completely weightless. It could also be that our organs, like our stomach and kidneys, are actually shifting around a teeny bit inside of our bodies. Another theory is that blood flow is pulled away from these organs as we fall due to gravitational force. When many of us picture falling in our minds, we imagine this large chunk of time that seems to just go on and on. We fall for what feels like forever. We have this time to consider our life choices and stew in utter terror. In reality, it can go very fast. Let's say you are falling from about 500 feet or 152 meters up. It would only take about 6 seconds to smash into the ground depending on your weight. It would take just over 10 seconds to fall from the Empire State Building. If you are old enough to remember the events of 9-11, one of the more harrowing things that unfolded that day for the cameras were the people falling from the World Trade Center buildings. Some people believe that they jumped to escape a more harrowing end, but I personally believe many of them simply fell accidentally. The floors impacted directly by the planes had large stretches that were completely destroyed. There was also certainly dark smoke obstructing people's vision. Some people may have simply walked towards what they believed was an exit, only to find themselves suddenly plummeting towards the ground. I believe this because I remember seeing footage and later photos of the people falling. They looked as if they were frozen in time. Some looked completely stunned. The truth is that even if a person falls from what seems like a really high point, They may not have enough time to truly process what is happening, especially if it is accidental and they do not see it coming. When falling, there are many components at play, but the only one that will kill you is the deceleration. This is the sudden stop to movement. The higher up that you fall from, the worse it will be and the more you will weigh upon impact. So it isn't actually the fall itself that kills you, but the moment that you stop falling. Gravitational force directly determines how much we weigh. Gravity increases from the height of a fall as well as velocity at which you are falling. Both of these things go hand in hand. The higher up you fall from, the higher the speeds you will reach while falling, which means a higher gravitational force. 1g is the force of Earth's gravity, which is what we are experiencing now. If you reach 5g, you would weigh around 5 times what you weigh now. With any luck, you will die on impact. This is really the best that we can hope for when it comes to dying from a fall. That means that you will suffer one or more injuries that will kill you at the moment that you hit, 
like a ruptured brainstem. You wouldn't experience any sensation or pain from the impact because you would be dead before you have time to process any pain signals. It might seem like we process pain and sensation instantaneously because it happens so quickly, but we don't. It takes milliseconds, which is long enough to delay it past the point of death in some cases. Unfortunately, dying on impact is never a certainty. People have survived falls from 22,000 feet in the past. That does leave the possibility that you will have to feel some of the consequences. Before I offer a vivid portrayal of what you might experience, let's discuss some of the injuries that can result from a big fall. Two common injuries seen on autopsy reports are called coup and countercoup injuries, which are sustained to the brain. Coup injuries are contusions, which are areas of tissue where capillaries have burst that occurs directly in the area of trauma. Countercoup injuries happen on the opposite side of the sustained trauma. When a person meets an especially forceful impact, the brain can basically ricochet off of the skull. It might hit the front of the skull first, if that's the area that lands, and then bounce backwards against the skull immediately after. It results in damage to the tissue on both sides. The skull can also outright shatter. This can cause widespread damage and hemorrhaging to the brain tissue. If that happens, it is also likely that the orbital bones, the bones surrounding both eyes, will also severely fracture. Pretty much all facial bones can sustain serious damage, and teeth can shatter as well. You might bite down on your tongue at impact, causing the tissue to sever. Spinal fractures are another big one, and it can fracture in multiple places. Your cervical spine can suffer a complete break, and the ligaments that attach your skull to your neck can snap, resulting in an internal decapitation. Every single type of fracture can result from a fall, and there have been single cases that have seen just about every type of fracture. Every single organ in your body is vulnerable to a rupture, even your heart, but some are more susceptible like your spleen and liver. This, of course, leads to serious internal bleeding. Even your arteries and blood vessels can blow. In fact, if the impact is great enough, your very cells can basically explode. The ruptured heart isn't as commonly seen as a ruptured aorta. That is the main artery that carries blood away from your heart towards other organs and areas of your body. It's called a traumatic aortic transection, and it's very difficult to survive. It has about an 80% fatality rate. The aorta can even become completely detached from your heart. If you were to fall from a plane at 30,000 feet, there are some additional hardships that you would face. Up that high, air pressure is much lower than where we are now. That doesn't mean that there's less oxygen in the air, but molecules are farther apart, so you get much less oxygen with each breath. This leads to something called hypoxia. Vital organs do not get enough oxygen, which can lead to organ failure, but your immediate threat is hypoxic brain injury. It wouldn't likely cause lasting damage because of how little time you would spend up there, but it would likely cause you to lose consciousness. That may not sound so bad, all things considered, but the bad news is, once you get closer to the ground and are able to breathe in more molecules, you would snap out of it. It's also bitter cold up there. I'm talking negative 48 degrees Fahrenheit at 30,000 feet. Who doesn't hate being cold? This would cause frostbite freaky fast, which can induce pain that is all too similar to serious burns. On average, you would reach terminal velocity after falling for about 1,500 feet, or 457 meters, which would bring you to a falling speed of about 120 miles per hour. At this point, you would no longer feel like you're falling out of control, but floating, which might be kind of neat, but I doubt that you'd be able to enjoy it. Another misconception about falling is that a body of water might save you. If you fall from high enough up, that water will act the same as going kersplat on concrete. If you survive the initial fall, the risk of drowning is great. Let me put this into perspective for you and give you a bit of a representation of how this experience might feel. The moment that you begin plummeting, you will wish to squeal, and you might as that stomach drop sensation takes hold. At the same time, you might feel an intense eruption of stomach acid bubble up your throat, leaving it feeling like scorched earth. Your mind will begin pacing and racing with thousands of thoughts all at once. It will be like a long novel being rapidly flipped through. It will feel impossible to grab hold of just one. 
the only thing that will feel real is your impending sense of doom. It will haunt you. It will cling to you like a cat suit, making your throat constrict and your eyes twitch. Your heart will pound against your chest. It will seem like it's moving upwards, as if it's trying to crawl out of your esophagus. You clench your eyes shut to try and snuff out this reality, and you count down in your head. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. You never get to finish. If you die on impact, six will be your last moment to feel or consider anything. If you don't, six will be interrupted by an intense, tormenting, electrical explosion. It will ripple through your body like an eerie, ominous mushroom cloud. The catecholamines released in your body may subdue the pain for a few moments, leaving you to experience just the force upon your legs, trunk, arms, and finally head. You will feel, and possibly hear, your body crumble like a stale graham cracker. As your bones churn into fragments within your flesh, you will certainly begin to experience sensation. The only thing that you can compare it to is being hooked up to jumper cables that are attached to a car battery. It's sputtering amps and volts through you at a rapid speed. Things may go completely dark at this moment. The force of impact may knock you out. If you come to, there will be a very slight moment where your entire body and all its nerves run silent. This moment is deceiving you, making you forget what has happened. Once it comes to pass, you will feel as if miniature firecrackers are detonating inside of your guts. Your spleen and liver has ruptured. They are pumping blood into your abdominal cavity, which only aggravates your internal tissue further. It might send the overwhelming signal that you have to go to the bathroom. Out of shock and desperation, you attempt to move just the slightest bit. Big mistake. Your battered and some even shattered bones sends a new shock wave of electricity through your entire being. You scream and wince at the jolt. This makes you realize that your head is throbbing. Within seconds, that throbbing turns into the sensation of brain freeze amplified by a thousand. Yet somehow, from the inside out, your head is running so hot. It intensifies as if your brain is on a preheating skillet. There is really no time limit on how long it can take to die following a fall. Some people end up in comas, some people die right away. Others take seconds, two minutes, to even hours. If you have multiple organs or arteries rupture, chances are very high that you will bleed to death in under a minute. 